opportunity to second. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I beg to second the motion. And Mr. Speaker, right at the beginning. Let's we, consult in low tones, please. Let's consult in low tones. Including the Attorney General Emeritus. M Mr. Speaker, in fact, when people are consulting loudly, it looks like even the weight of this onerous duty that the Senate has is being taken lightly because there is no other institution in the country other than the Senate and the courts of law, and it's not the ordinary court, it is the High Court and the Supreme Court that can remove an elected leader from a position on which he's been elected. That's the power given only to the courts and the highest courts in the land and the Senate. So I beg you, that when you are dealing with a matter of such a weight, we treat it with a decorum, so that anybody looking at the proceedings in this house knows that we are taking this matter seriously. It, this governor, who may eventually be tried by the Senate, he would want to feel that he's being given a fair chance. And those who have accused him would want to feel that they are being given a fair chance. So, Mr. Speaker, I beg that uh, uh, we appreciate the weight of what we are about to do. And, Mr. Speaker, to answer Senator Malala's question, which I think is critical, at this moment, the decision that we're making is whether to investigate through the pre uh, plenary or through the committee, who is to carry out the investigations. And that is a decision which the Senate itself must make. Do we go by the way of plenary, or do we go by the way of committee? And that's a decision of the Senate comprising of all the members, and particularly the delegations. So I do not want, uh, uh, and with respect, anybody to feel that you know this is like a, a prejudgment, we are going by the history, the little history you have had. There were moments during the uh, Wambora case that almost everybody unanimously felt that the, uh, the correct way was to go was through the committee. But I think, you know, that we have shifted goalposts. Uh, when one comes, we think the committee is good. Uh, when another one comes, we think this plenary is, is the best way to go. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, I, I like what the House Business, or rather the Senate Business Committee decided that it is now the Senate sitting as plenary to decide whether we go by plen uh, plenary or by the committee, not the Senate Business Committee. Because when the Senate Business Committee has ever ma makes that decision, when it's brought before the House, you can just get from the air what, what, what the feeling of the members uh, are. In fact, the last time, the leader of majority declined to move the motion, uh, not because people did not like the committee, but because of the names they saw. So what uh, I think uh, we are trying to do is that if you want to go by the way of committee, let us have that decision. And then we come with another motion with names, then you are the ones who are going to make the decision. If you decide that we are going by way of plenary, this matter ends here, and the speaker will, will proceed to make, uh, read the charges, and the trial will, will be by way of plenary. So I think this is a very uh, democratic process for us to make that decision. Finally, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I want to say that uh, in my many years in parliament, many, many years in parliament, I would encourage, from my own experience, that uh, each senator has got his own self-worth. And when you sit or come before the Senate as a parliamentarian, you have your own self-worth. And me, I can never be intimidated in my political life. I can never be intimidated. Because I've seen many people come and go 
I've seen many powerful people come and go. I've seen presidents come here and go. I have seen people who, on their word, you would leave this house and you'd be locked in the same day. They have come and gone. I have seen very respected women in this country like Grace Onyango, who was in the committee for the, for the special investigations relating to the disappearance of uh, uh, Jem. Yeah, yeah. And that made me, made me very proud because those days there were very few women. And she stood firm. She was required to change a report of the National Assembly. And she stood firm. So I, I want to plead with you. I want to plead with you. We got a heavy task. And if people out there feel you can be intimidated and you've been brought to this house with all the powers that we have, including the trial of a governor. Imagine next time that you may have a motion for the trial of, a, of the president. Will you be intimidated? So I, I, I urge you for the future of this country in the performance of your constitutional duties, never be intimidated. <laughs> And, and, and if my day, if my day comes, if my day comes, I'll accept it. If my day comes, I'll accept it. But my conscience, the way I've been brought up, my conscience, I will never sell it. I will never. Because I know men and women, like uh, the late Serenoy, one of the most brilliant lawyers. He could have lived longer as a parliamentarian. But for his, for his standing for the truth, we are now enjoying some of the privileges. Let us, let us think of these people who sacrificed so much. And in parliament, people like quoting Martin Luther King said so much. Uh, there's another famous French uh, uh, philosopher whom we like. Uh, uh, that, that you may have the right to word to uh, I may disagree with you by a Voltaire, that, but I'll, de I'll, I'll, I'll defend you to death for your right to say it. It's so beautiful when you say it, but when that moment comes, we speak a different language. So me, I want to say today, in, in, in defense of what you are supposed to, to do, that however much I disagree with you, but if you are being violated and are sworn to defend the constitution of this country, however much we disagreed, I'll stand up to defend you. I also expect you as a, as a patriot, that's why the word patriot is there in Article 10, that you'll defend me. So let us not behave as a nation of beasts or we live in the animal world, let us be men of honor and distinction. Men and women and, uh, of distinction. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I beg to second. Order, senators. Before order.